Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to hook our a button, a push button switch to our Arduino, and then also program it so that we can output something to the serial monitor. All right, so let's get started first with the circuit. So I'm gonna grab myself a button here. Forgive the shakiness of my camera. I have a really jerry-rigged camera holder here. And I have one of these simple little tactile buttons. And I'm gonna pop it in uh, on either side of the rail here. So hopefully you've had some experience with breadboards, but very quickly, oops, it's not going in very well. Very quickly, all these are connected. All these rows across here are connected. Uh, they're not connected across the, the chasm there. And then you have your hot and cold rails. So your blue rail here, all those are connected up together, but vertically this way. Uh, even, you know, so these four are connected, those four are connected, those four, and then hot ones are connected together. Okay. So uh, we have our Arduino here. It's plugged in. I put my button here on. Right is left, left is right now. So I put my button here. All right. And I'm just going to hook it up. So I'm using this. Uh, I'm using the digital inputs. Oh, this really doesn't want to stay. Let me just bend that a little bit and uh, see if we can get it to stay a little bit better. So I'm using the digital uh, ports, the digital ports on my Arduino. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm using the internal resistors on the Arduino. All right. And we're going to set them up. We're going to pull them up so they'll be uh, high. Right, the digital ports will be pulled up to high, and then this will just simply ground, ground the digital port, and then it'll go to low. Okay, it'll bypass the resistor, and really you only have two connections to make. So the first one will be the ground. So what we'll do is we'll take the ground from the Arduino. And we'll go ahead and use one of the ground rails because this way we can have multiple buttons, even though we're just going to do one today. So I'll plug that into the ground rail there. Okay, ground from the Arduino, the ground uh, to the ground rail. All right. And then, then we'll take the ground rail to one side of the button. Now, the way the button works is the two, when you push it, it bridges the, the left side with the right side, bridges the two. So you can use either side of the the, the button there. It will bridge the two sides together. All right. So we're going to send ground to one side. From the ground rail. And so you notice that the entire, the entire ground rail is connected all the way down to here and, and beyond. All right. So then that I'm in fact plugging this all the way to the ground there. Okay. So I'm going to plug that in here to 18. And then we will plug um, the other side of the button to one of my digital ports. Now remember in the, I don't know if you remember from the, if you watched the last video on, on the Pro Micro, but the Pro Micro has ports that double up. So I believe that that's digital two. I mean, we can just do digital three. That's fine. I believe that's digital three, but they also double up for, as analog ports as well. So we have one side of the button, two connections. Well, three, if we're using the ground rail, we count that. But basically, two connections, one from one side of the, the button to one of our digital ports, in this case, three, and the other connection from the ground to the other side of our button. And that's there to ground through the ground rail. Okay, real simple, simple circuit. And now when we connect it, we are grounding our digital pin and that will send that low, okay? So it's a bit inverse, pressed is low and released is high, but we're gonna pull up the resistor. Okay, so then let's look at the software for it. Um, let's just get a blank sketch here, and I'll just have my cheat sketch behind here so I can do that. And I'm just gonna have a set up an integer for the digital pin number or the button number, and I'll just call INT BT1 and I'll say equals to 3 because that's the pin we're using. We're using digital pin 3 if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a look. Yeah, I plugged it into the 3. That's right. 
Okay, so digital pin three, and then get rid of these notes. We're going to begin our serial port because we're going to output to our serial port or via the serial port. And I'll just use 9600 baud, the baud rate of 9600. And then I'm going to pull up, like I said, I'm going to pull up the um, <coughs> uh, the button. Okay, so I'm going to do pin mode. And, oops. And it's going to be pin BT1, which is the pin number three. And I'm going to go input pull up. <coughs> All in caps. Up, okay, so that's going to pull the resistor up so that it registers high uh, from, the, from the beginning. Okay, and that's what we have to do in setup. So the code is pretty simple too. So then what we'll simply do is then we'll do a digital read. Okay, and we'll just go digital read. Take the caps lock off. And I believe it's just... Um, uh, buttons I, yeah, buttons one. Okay, so digital read BT one, and we'll make that a uh, variable. So we'll say int uh, BT one val equals digital read, and then we can simply print post that or print that out to the um, ser serial port serial dot print. I'm doing this right, yep. And then we'll put out BT1 val. All right, uh, we'll print line so it doesn't just make one long line, print LN. And then we'll have a little delay so that the serial port doesn't get jammed up. So say 15 milliseconds, something like that. Okay, so that should be pretty good. So um, uh, let's save that. And just looking at the video there, we have our Arduino plugged in there, okay? And we'll just have the right thing chosen, have the board. That just happens to be these Pro Micro boards. And I have my right port, and then I'll upload my sketch to the board. Okay, and now we can see if we can look at both, oops. Uh, make this slightly smaller then. Now if we look at both that and the stereo monitor. That's coming in on one. So that's the, the high. It's pulled up to high, and if I push it, it should be zero. If I let go, one. If I push it, it should be zero. Okay, great. So that's a success. Okay. So really simple to get buttons working. And, you know, you realize that you can put any kind of connection that will make some contact, so like a foot switch or uh, various things. Basically, it's just it's just bridging the contact. Okay. Now, let's uh, adjust up our, um, our code a little bit. So oftentimes, though, uh, especially in the, the uses that are going to follow this video, oftentimes we don't want to have this continuous uh, printout. This continuous value print, okay? But instead, we want um, a discrete. If you push it, it gives you one. It prints out one to the serial line, and if you release it, it pushes. Uh, uh, it lets out another one, okay? So first of all, we have to split up. Let's split up the um, the on and off. All right. So we'll say we'll use an if statement, and we'll say if bt one val is equal to one. Uh, you know we can we can just do this. They they just do this digital read. All right, I, maybe that's better. So, uh, we we'll just we'll make it a, a variable. I'm not sure if that affects things the speed that much. Oh well, we'll just do that. If that is equal to, and then if it's if it gets jammed up, then we'll do a a different. We'll just put the digital read directly in. But if VT val equals, we'll start with zero. Okay, then do this else we can do else if if bt1 val just in case there's really isn't any other option but uh, goes one so we just do else sorry else 
do this. So that means it's equal to one, okay? So, uh, and we'll print it there. I'll print that there. So it's essentially doing the same thing now, except we're just looking to see if it's zero or one, and we're still just printing it. But we can make it do different things. All right. Now, the reason I, I'm doing this is because we're going to now set a um, set a little gate in there so that it only lets one value through, uh, uh, either one or zero, depending on if you have the button's pressed or the button's released. Okay, so it's not this continuous stream of values. So we'll just put a, uh, we'll make a, um, we'll make a Boolean, a variable, a true or false variable, and we'll call it a B, T1 gate, BT1G, for example, and let's make it, um, <coughs> what do we, what do we start? Uh, false, okay. I think we have to declare it out here first. So we're going to declare it here, and then within setup, we'll uh, initialize it with a false reading. So BT1G equals false. Okay, so we're at the beginning of this false, all right? So, uh, so in order for it to be zero, that means it's true, it's being pushed. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay, so we have to make sure it is false. So it needs to be false. If it is false, then I believe, yeah, and then we're, we'll let it go through, and then we'll change it to true, okay? Yeah, all right. So we'll say if out here, uh, bt1g uh, is false. I guess a shorthand would be this, exclamation point, bt1g, if bt1g is false. And make sure we line up all our curly brackets there, outside there. So this if statement is gonna contain this that if statement. So make sure that the closed curly bracket comes out there. If BT1G is false, then if the value is is low, which means the button's pushed, so it's inverted uh, to what it might normally be intuitively, then we'll print it once, and then we'll close the gate. So we'll say BT1G equals true. Okay, so the close of the gate. So the next time it comes around, it's true and it's not false, so it won't print the value again. Okay, so we can only do that one time. Un until it's reset back to false, right? But we can do that on the release. So we can say, um, and we can use an else here too, if you want, but we have to change the internal else here. So else, that just means that BT, um, BT1G is true. It's the else to, um, to this one, right? So this one, this one ends here, and this is the else to that. So else, if BT1G is true, then we have to put the if back in. If BT1 val equals zero, one, I'm sorry, then we'll print the, the value again and we'll make it false. BT1G equals false. Okay, so let me just go through that one more time. Uh, we start our loop. This becomes, the, it reads it. Initially, it is one, right? Because it's been pulled up to high if we're not touching the button. <laughs> it looks and see, is it false? Well, initially it's false because we set it to false here in the setup. And then, uh, so yeah, initially it's false. So if it's false, yes, that's okay, go on. And then we see if it's zero uh, first. Um, I guess you can you could swap those two, but it's fine. It's zero. It's it's only zero. If it's it's pressed, right? So it won't it won't print anything out. But let's let's presume we press a button. It'll be zero, and then it'll print it out, and then it'll turn to true. So it can't as long as we're holding the button, it can't do it. Okay, it can't. Uh, it it it'll block it. The gate is closed. Yeah. Then if if we release the button, else else refers to this. Is it is this BT1G true? So is it false? Uh, I mean, is it true? So, sorry. So, else refers to BT1G, which here looks if it's false. So, if else means if it's 
otherwise, you know, if it's not false, which means if it's true. So if we let it go, it's true. We let it go. Yes, it goes through this else. So it is true. Is it one? Well, yeah, it's one when it's let go, when it's on high. So then it prints and then it turn, changes back to false. Okay. And then it comes out. Uh, you know, then if it comes back here, it won't keep printing it out. Okay. Well, anyways, let's, let's run it and then you'll see actually what happens. We'll get rid of that print line there and we'll upload to our Arduino. And let's look at the serial port. So we have nothing there. But if we get my video back. If we push the button, it goes to zero. If we release the button, it's one. Push the button zero, release the button one, et cetera, et cetera. See? Okay, great. So that works. Okay, so let's end that video there. In the next one, I'm going to show you uh, a couple ways of communicating with different programs. So the next one, we'll look at communicating with processing, sending serial signals out, and then with Super Collider.